Hello, welcome back to Let's Play the Journeyman Project 2 Buried in Time. Today we go back to the Farnstein Station with Arthur in tow. Man, the station looks like hell. Most of the habitat modules have been sheared off. The lab there also, down below. I'm just hanging by a thread. Amazing that I survived that hit. I guess I'm just thick-skulled. It's funny. I used to feel that station like a body. From inside, you don't get a picture of the damage. You just feel like limbs have been cut off. You try to twitch a finger and you, you get no response. It's kind of strange to see it like this. So he will be accompanying us as we try to find out what was changed here. So let's cheese girl our way back in. Now, you may recall last time we went to the left. And there was a reason for that. Well, somewhere under all that ceiling thing is the door to, well, what used to be the hydroponics module. Nothing special, just your garden variety greenhouse. <laughs> garden variety... sorry. <laughs> the doc used to spend a lot of time in here, gardening. It's all automated, of course, so I'm not sure why he bothered, especially the way he set up all kinds of lockout routines to keep me out. I got on his nerves, he said. I have no idea what he meant, but I got the picture anyway that he wanted to be alone. So as you can Come see, on, Arthur is still... On. Oops, I interrupted him there, but he, uh... If you didn't hear what he said, he said, let's move on, just really quietly. Um, but yeah, he's still learning. He's still kind of like a child in some respects, at least. Um, you know, he's still developing, learning his human. All right. The passageway has been destroyed, so the only way we're going to get to the biomass processing room is through the ice droid. We're going to have to hurry, though, because it's all in vacuum and your oxygen reserve isn't going to get you very far. We'll have to take the atmosphere mining lift. So that's a hint to basically, I'm just looking around to see if he comments on anything else, but that's a hint to basically go this way instead. Okay, the passageway is destroyed, so the only way to get to the sculptures is going to be to go through the ice droid. The airlock lift through this door will take us there. Pressure variance too great. Door may not be opened until pressure is equalized. Hmm, the airlock on the other side must still be pressurized. That's why this door won't open. I can put out an audio override code to bypass the safety interlocks, but the rest will be up to you. Here goes. Emergency door release initiated. Please stand by. So this is why we couldn't go this way last time, is because you need Arthur to go this way. So you can't complete the zone without him. We're gonna hop in right away and listen to Arthur some more. These lifts weren't used too often. The atmosphere mining is all automated, so they're really only for maintenance. Doc used to come up here every once in a while because it's really quite beautiful inside the ice droid, but it's such a pain to suit up, I suppose. Doc wanted to make this place self-sufficient, so he set all this up when he refurbished the station. It's a simple idea, really. You capture a large asteroid composed mainly of water ice, bore through the center and set up a mining rig on a cable track. The ice is mined away from the inside out and melted at the junctions at either end and pumped down to the atmosphere plant on the station proper. There, some of it's broken down into oxygen for breathable air and hydrogen for the attitude jets and backup generator. This is mostly why Doc decided to move the station into orbit near Saturn's rings. Here, there is an unlimited supply of asteroids, and considering the station's only supporting a crew of one, Doc would only need to replace it once every decade or so. They do a lot of world building for this time zone through Arthur. I absolutely love it. It even sounds like a lot of it sounds scientifically plausible, especially with the level of technology as displayed here. But I think it's based on actual scientific theories. Uh, we can look around here. We can see there's pressure skins, which we can't put on and nothing else to really do or look at. We can't pressurize it because the station obviously doesn't have much capacity to pressurize left. So we will just go to the free program destination. And I know we have the explosive charge in our inventory. We'll look at that later. That came from the door when he, if I, I can't even remember if I talked about it yet, uh, but that came from the door when he did the audio override that shot out. So that way the door could open essentially. All right. And we gotta look down a little bit here. And here is a service elevator. Now I know. Looks pretty scary, but don't worry. There's no gravity, remember? 
So as long as you hold on to something, you won't fall off. And you get quite a beautiful view because we are now outside the station, technically. And I know I'm and beneath the ice droid. Ooh. How do you like the feeling of thousands of tons of ice balanced above your head while there's nothing beneath your feet? Getting anxious? Hmm? Phobias creeping in? Hmm? High anxiety? Uh, no? Huh. Oh well. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's take this up into the ice droid. And this is actually an important way stop for us, but we'll listen to Arthur some more first. Those remotes are what we call nibblers. They crawl along the inside walls, and an arc of heated molecular filament rotates back and forth like an ice cream scoop and carves out the ice droid. The ice is shattered by the vibration of the filament, and the small chunks are drawn into the processor by the gravitational pull of the mass driver rings. Alrighty. And where is... You can see we're on the elevator. We're going to get our little oxygen warning soon. There it is. All the way over here. So we want to... Uh... That's just a plug-in controller that we use to test the mining program. It runs a simple mining cycle on one of the remotes. So we're going to use this to manually run a mining cycle. So here you can see the nibblers carving out the bits of ice and bringing it through the uh, these gravitational arrays, or mass driver arrays. Uh, and you can see them go into processing. Now... We're going to run an O2 extraction cycle. Oh, O2 and H2, H2O extraction cycle. Hopefully we don't die. I think we'll be just barely fine. There we go. Now we'll listen to Arthur's... This generates the gravitational field for the mass driver rings. A lot of ice shavings get caught in the inversion coils and melt, so there's a water trap built in. That's the purge valve on the right. There's also an oxygen reserve connection on the left in case a maintenance job takes too long or something. We're upside down, so he's actually referencing left and right, not right and left. Anyways, let's take some oxygen now. I think we could uh, use some here. And that will completely refill our reserves, so back out here. I don't think there's any... Oop, oh, there is one more common here. Those rings create a shallow gravitational field which acts as a mass driver. Kind of a gravitational conveyor belt. Okay, yeah. So the rings are gravitationally powered and a mass driver. Okay. And I don't think he's got anything else to say here. So let's take this up the rest of the way to the top of the ice droid. can look around not much to see here obviously we're above the ice droid now although oh my god that is an absolutely beautiful view of jupiter i think jupiter saturn i think I thought it was saturn let me check that real quick i i should remember that but i don't uh saturn okay it just looks really orange to me so but absolutely stunning view. You'll notice we can't pressurize this module either. There's a little control panel, I guess, or maybe the brains of it. Hey, look at this. Well, normally those would be filled with tanks for water, oxygen, or hydrogen from the processor. Hmm, huh. looks like there's only one canister left. The rest must have been in hydroponics or in the lab. All right, any other comments? Nope. You'll see otherwise it's pretty similar to the previous pod. And since we have some time, I'll read this the descriptions now. So water canister, empty. Description, this water canister is designed to maintain the liquid state of its contents even when exposed to space. It is currently empty. And then we have the uh, explosive charge name. 
explosive charge. Description, there's a small grav pad on the back side of this explosive charge which allows it to stick to any surface. And if you remember from Arthur talking about that station we were at earlier, excuse me, there's also a water supply. So we're gonna go back there right away and fill this up with water. It's just the most efficient thing to do. I kind of wish they would put the water canister in the uh, the first transport we have to go through, but I guess that would have been a little too easy. So we get that crisp, fresh water, and now it's water canister full. It's currently full. And we'll top off our oxygen here. So I believe you can refill multiple times from a single mining cycle. Yep, okay. Oops, one more, and up we go. And in we go. And now let's head over to the, uh, the science wing, is it? You'll notice because this pod was already depressurized, we have no problems getting into, uh, getting out of it. So, I believe this is... This looks like it's in worse shape than the habitat wing, but really it's just the corridor that got hit hard. The lab was on the center section, though. It was sheared off completely and had my studio and Doc was in the lab when the shower hit. I don't think it got hit directly, though, just the section of the cord it was attached to collapsed and it tumbled away. And this music, honestly, is probably one of my favorite tracks from the game because it perfectly encapsulates the atmosphere, or lack thereof, of this setting. I just love it. Yep, here's biomass processing. And this help message is actually pretty relevant. I won't play it, but basically he's saying... Uh-oh, it's normally kept depressurized, so we would uh, use this panel, which we will in a little bit. But first, I just want to kind of show off the rest of the station here, or the rest of this area. You can see another beautiful view of Saturn. Oh, in fact, Arthur has something to say about it. So beautiful, tempestuous. I spent a lifetime staring down at that view, pulling back to see the intricate weavings of the storms, Focusing in so close I could see the facets of ammonia crystals floating like stars in a sea of helium and hydrogen. It's been the inspiration for a lot of my work. I'm gonna miss it. I can certainly see why he would miss it. It's just such a beautiful setting. And we could actually jump over here. Now I believe this leads to the AI Nexus, which is basically the, uh, or not the AI, what is it, the, the scanner room. So this is where we met Arthur. Pressure variance too great. Door may not be opened until pressure is equalized. Now, if you remember, the scanner room is pressurized, which is why we can't go in, because we would let all the atmosphere out. And here you can see, like, this foam here. This is foam that, when exposed to vacuum, it expands, the goal being the seal uh, off, you know, the hole or whatever it is. And you can see it tried so very hard to expand. And we can, uh, around a bit more but unfortunately there's not much else to do or look at here nor does Arthur have any comments so you can see it kind of a moon there almost it's separate from the ice droid at least so we'll head back to biomass processing and if you look on the wall here there's a panel which is similar to the panel we saw before in the capacitance array now, because we haven't pressurized the capacitance array, we actually have the capability of pressurizing a different section of the spaceship. Well, you already know what this does. Yes, we do. And this is where like the whole time travel thing gets wonky, since we're, we're traveling to the same start point and start time, but we can basically do different things and there's no like copies of us roaming about that we're fighting with or anything. That's like the only place where or their time travel theories and stuff falls a little bit flat. But 
uh, that we, we can see. This is where we are now, the science wing. You press rise. There's the scanner room that we were in. So we entered here in the habitat wing, came all the way up here, and now we're in the science wing. This is biomass processing. You can see there's the med lab, and then the neuronics lab was blown away, as was the AI Nexus, because you'll recall we had a jump for that, but there's a break specifically in this section. And you can see there's the ma the mess and rec module, which I think he said was what, it was either that or the crew burst that Farnstein was in, and these got completely detached from the station. Uh, hydroponics as well, I think, got detached. And you can see there's actually a passageway in the center that connects these two. We'll go through that later because uh, we will be visiting the station one more time. So there's a capacitance array, which we pressurized last time, and then the docking bay that we had a maze through to get to the scanner room, and then the AI Nexus. So now we are going to pressurize biomass processing instead. If you were to enter biomass processing without without pressurizing it, you would get an immediate game over. Which I have speculation for why that happens. I think it's because you might technically, like if you made a beeline and knew exactly what you were doing, you might be able to solve the puzzle, as it were, before you run out of oxygen. And I think they really wanted you to <laughs> solve that puzzle. The other guy who was in here went around and interacted with all the sculptures like he was looking for the right one. Funny. He really seemed to know what he was doing. The one he eventually settled on is at Programming Station C. So, that's our ultimate goal of Station C. You can kind of see from the design of this that we'll be walking around the outside of a spear, kind of. As you can see how these are up on the walls. But fortunately, we have mag boots. Either that or whatever gravity system they have here might still be operational. You can call this maternity ward. This is where I was born. The huge womb in the center is where the neurosynaptic polymer gel that makes up my brain mass is grown. Bringing it out of the programming stations. Kind of homey, isn't it? So I believe there's four programming stations, so one, two, three, four, if I'm not mistaken. There's the center he's talking about. Now, because this environment is pressurized, we have unlimited time as far as the game is concerned. And you can see there's some, uh, we can see there's six that we can immediately see. Yeah, so this could be, if you, if this were like a VR or something, this would be really disorientating. So there's the, a drip, as it were. Uh, what station is this? <laughs> uh, I actually can't read that. Maybe it'll be more visible when I blow it up and, actually, I want to say this is station A. Maybe not. These stations are where the neurosynaptic polymer gel is programmed. Sort of where my DNA is coded, I suppose. Each new function is mapped independently into a glob of gel like this by stimulating synaptic pathways with the resonance probes. Each program mass is then introduced to the parent nexus where it's assimilated and becomes part of the wetware. A little like an RNA injection. And you'll notice this one is empty, but you can still see the probes on each of these, I don't know, supports, maybe? Dr. Farnstein had set up a studio in the research lab where I could interface with a painting module. It was kind of important to me, things that I couldn't figure out, I just put to canvas. After the accident, I had a lot of things I wanted to work out, and the studio was just gone. I guess one day I sort of hit on the idea of using all of this raw material here. It gave me a lot of flexibility. It's a medium I'm familiar with. My own gray matter. Green matter, I suppose. I guess I like the irony, too. The artist cannibalizing himself for his art. He references an accident here, and I don't think he's referencing the asteroid. I think he's referencing something that happened in the past. Because he didn't hit upon this while he was dying. He's been doing this for some time, as you'll see. And because we know Farnstein has made trips to Earth to sell these before. And this is the interface station, which we can't use there because, or actually, I think we can only use it on uh, the correct one. We actually can't interact with this globule, even though uh, yeah, we're right below that. So this is where, I guess, like it's grown in the center here where we can't see it, then it feeds out of these four corners. Very uh, <laughs> alien looking, sort of. All right. 
So let's head back. And that's okay. That one I can read is C, so let's go this way. Or is this C? Well, this is the one. If you touch it, you can see what it's supposed to do. Whatever he did to it only shows up in reaction to a specific harmonic resonance. But why go to all this trouble? Alright. Let's go back. Let's put a pin in this one. Uh, uh, let's see. Okay, I think this is the one I wanted. I just want to explore kind of like the other... This might be Station A. So we can actually interact on some of these other sculptures. Well, this one endlessly shoots goo everywhere. I don't, uh... I don't... I wish Arth they would have programmed Arthur to comment on these sculptures and kind of give insight as to what they were supposed to be, but I guess just looking and thinking about it, that seems kind of like an angry child having a tantrum, throwing paint everywhere. And then we have another sculpture here. Not sure how I feel about that one. And now we'll get to the uh, two sculptures that actually... The other two sculptures that work. Right. Uh... That's where we were before with the one empty. This one has two empty, it looks like. Uh, it messes me up that you have to look down. Nope. This is where we were before. Okay. It's very easy to get turned around here. So this one... Okay, so this one is empty. Alright, my bad. He does give us help, so... Like he said, this is what it's supposed to do. Almost sounds like something that's in pain. Almost. So here we can actually utilize this. And actually, going back for a second, uh, we'll want to use our evidence biochip. We haven't used this yet, but if you try to use it now, insufficient evidence cause a temporal anachronism must be revealed before evidence can be registered. So we cannot use it just yet. The harmonic resonance control is used to introduce specific three-dimensional resonance waves into the biomass. Where the waves converge, the gel is stimulated into opening new patterns of pathways. Without inserting the probes, I suppose the sculpture would just be flooded by the resonance field. There's a chance that it might trigger an embedded response. Now, you may think this is a weak puzzle, and I suppose it is, because really all you're supposed to do is cycle through these until you get a positive response. So here we got a negative response to 74 megahertz. Undefined, can't do, oops, can't do anything with that. Here is 5.61 hertz. Another negative response. Is that, no, that's 5.6 terahertz, I think. This is 25 kilohertz. Another negative response. And 11 kilohertz. We get a positive response from this. And there's, well, it may be a weak puzzle. It actually gives you a piece of important information. Remember this 11 kilohertz number because we'll be able to correlate that later. And now when we click on it, well, that's a little bit different. Okay, well, I guess that does it. You know, for so long I dreamed of getting out of here. But now that I've gotten my wish, it's kind of strange to think that I'll never be able to come back. I'm going to miss this place. Hold me, Gage. Sorts of Ripple documented. Mission complete. You may leave the time zone at your discretion. So for major pieces of evidence like this, for most of them at least, uh, actually, only half of them, now that I think about it. <laughs> uh, the, ev the evidence biochip will auto-record uh, the source of the ripple. Uh, every piece of minor evidence, as well as two well-hidden 
major ones, and maybe FPs is for the fourth one, I can't remember. But generally, we'll be using this manual locate function. Remember, this is just a modified op Opman biochip from the first game. So here we can see a Farnstein lab. Electronic schematics inconsistent with the technology level of this time period. So this basically is now saved for our reference. And because we don't want to alter history, let's set this back to uh, literally anything else. All right. Now, I wonder, I can't remember. Can we leave? We can, interesting. There's no reason to, of course. But, uh... You know, I will show one thing. Maybe. Uh, we got a little bit of a trek ahead of us. But uh, there is one thing I want to show, just so I can reduce the number of jumps I have to make in the future. We'll still be coming back here next time. But, uh... You may be wondering how the other agent managed to get over here. Let's look at what we had to go through. We needed Arthur, so how did they do it? Well, remember when Gage said he didn't want to, uh go into the TSA looking for a thruster. We'll find out later that other people weren't as nervous about uh, let's call it um, unsanctioned mission equipment. So we can go back to Okay, first I'm panic saving because I just realized we have gone a very long time without saving and we've had problems with crashes in the past. So, <laughs> uh, it, there was a little skip in the animation that made my uh, heart skip a beat there because I'm like, oh shit, I haven't saved in like 30 minutes or however long we've been doing this. You know, it's pretty interesting how this station is constructed. In my time, we still have to worry about the cost of lifting mass out of a gravity well. What do you guys have, a matter transmission or something, right? Anyway, the walls of these connection hallways are basically lightweight coramid fiber bags, honeycombed with little cells, kind of like bubble pack. They're shipped up folded, then pressurized with an expanding closed cell foam, which makes them rigid and acts as a self-sealant in case of things like micrometeorite punctures. With coramid mesh, they're resilient enough to handle some of the bigger, slower objects, but well, as you can see for yourself, what happens when it meets Lucifer's hammer? Yeah, so there he's just ex basically explaining the construction of the station and these, uh, this foam that I mentioned previously. Ooh, scary! And he's commenting on himself, so we can't get into hydroponics. This is pathetic. What am I gonna do next? With a flashlight under my face? Actually... No, I have to come back anyways. Not much to tell, really. Most of the modules were designed to shear off at the connection tube rather than get breached by a collision. That way, they hopefully wouldn't depressurize and at least the occupants would have a chance of being rescued. I'd imagine the crew bursts are in orbit somewhere among the ice chunks by now. Yeah, so... Pressure bearings too great. Door may not be opened until pressure is equalized. I don't know why there's a pressure variance, but I guess they just didn't bother to make a second message. There should be nothing there. This door used to lead to a shortcut between the habitat wing and the science wing. Now I'm sure it's just a scenic view. So this, if you recall from the schematic, this was what went between the habitat and science wings. And you could actually open it! And you can even go in it! But, you miss. <laughs> you miss the station and now we're floating in orbit. You can't move, um... You don't even have... It'd be interesting, like, if... I doubt it's programmed in. 
but it'd be interesting if, like, you could cheat yourself a can of, uh, of, um, whatchamacallit, uh, Cheese Girl. <laughs> I spoke sweet. Yeah. Yeah, they don't have that. I was going to say, depending on if this is pressurized or not, uh, you might be able to use this. Uh, but yeah, you're basically stuck here. You have no means of navigating uh, because we do not have a thruster. We can't even turn around and look at the station, which I wish we could do. But yeah, you see, we get we pushed ourselves, but we missed the grab, and there's no way you can get that grab. But if someone had, say, a thruster, they would be able, or you, just better reactions than Agent 5, I guess, they would be able to grab that, and that would be your shortcut to the uh, science wing there. Because you'll see, like, right where we shot through was the point where it opened the space, and we had to cross that gap to get to the scanner room. So for now, we'll recall. And we'll get the cheese girl next time. But there is one thing that I have to show now, because otherwise I'll forget again. <laughs> because I've been meaning to comment on it. On the, uh, our Val 9, ha, 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 Val 9000. Uh, I think that's a play on the HAL 9000. But anyways, on our Universal Domestic Replicator, you'll see the numbers here, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Notice there's a missing number. I think it's right here. It's just cut off by the screen. And I don't think, uh... Yeah, you can still put it in, but, uh, it obviously... I don't think it has any use for, uh, ordering things. Uh, I'd have to look at the codes, but I don't think any of them have the number one. But you can still put it in. So, I just wanted to comment on that because I kept meaning to and I kept forgetting. So... Uh, actually, I may as well just save here, because next time we will be getting the Cheese Girl. And going back for one last trip to, uh, to the station. It'll be a shorter trip. We're basically just going to bring Arthur along uh, the first way that we went uh, when we first arrived at the station. So we'll be going to, uh, we'll be going to the AI Nexus. Well, not the, all the way to the AI Nexus, but we'll be going up to the scanner room through the capacitance array in the docking bay, just because there's some more dialogue you can get from Arthur that uh, builds a little bit more of the setting. But until then, thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for next time, and stay safe out there, and we'll see you then.